with end walkers around the corner everyone's wondering what they should prioritize what they need to complete before end walkers come out and if you have any of those questions then this video is for you hey guys my name is stefan ash and today i have another final fantasy guide for you in this video we're gonna go over what you should complete what you need to prioritize and how to prepare for end walker depending if you're a sprout or if you're already through the story there are going to be many types of these videos out there so i do recommend watching multiple because you might find something else else in someone else's video that might resonate with you a little bit more. These are just my personal opinions on what you should do. Before moving on, I want to give a huge shout out to Mr. D or Dildo McDildo face. I have a very good sense of humor, so I got a really good laugh out of that as he is a new Patreon supporter. Thank you, Mr. Dildo or Mr. D for your support and continued support. If you get any value out of this video, then don't forget to limit break three that subscribe button down below. The first type of player that we're going to go over first is one that maybe have started one month or two months ago if you are this type of player then your number one goal is to finish the story this is super important so then you can actually play and walker when it comes out and you're not still trying to play catch up any side stories like a realm reborn stormblood heaven's ward all of those can be done later and you don't necessarily have to get them done now as they're always going to be there in my opinion one of the more exciting things to do is to experience the story as it just comes out and you guys kind of have a little bit of a advantage or luckier I guess because you're going to be able to play through the story all the way through from start to finish once the Endwalker expansion comes out where a lot of us have been waiting for years in order to get the answers that we need. Doing newly released content with friends or with your free company there is just nothing like it especially when the community gets together and is enjoying and loving the story that has just come out. So if you've just started Final Fantasy 14 and you're still in Heaven's Ward or Stormblood, I would just prioritize getting through the story and not really worry about some of the other things that could be interesting at that point. Once you're done with the main story, then this leads us into player type number two. You're just about to finish or you've already finished and you're wondering how you should gear up or what you should complete before Endwalker. There are two things that you might want to focus on before Endwalkers and that's gearing up and a few additional additional activities that might give you some more background for when Endwalkers come out. There are a couple pieces of gear and a few that you should focus on over others. I'm going to break it down for you to make it really easy for the new players to understand. Right when you hit level 80, you're going to want to get item level 510 crafted gear. You can get this from the market board or from a friend who is a crafter, but right now it's really cheap on the market board. You're going to want to get this either way because this is going to give you a huge jump in stats and other things that you need in order to do some of the level 80 content as well as you're going to need this item level 510 gear in order to get the next gear which is item level 520 gear augmented crafted gear there are multiple ways to get 520 gear one of them being the crafted gear which is 520 or the crypt lurkers gear which we'll go over a little bit later the reason that you may want to get the augmented crafted gear even though it doesn't update anymore it's far easier to get and you can get it a lot quicker so if you're running a little behind, item level 520 crafted gear might be a better option for you. That doesn't mean though you can't mix and match. Say you get some crafted gear and you get some crypt lurkers gear, then you might just be ready for Endwalker right when it comes out. It's not a complete necessity, but it is really going to help through the first part of the Endwalker expansion. Once you have item level 510 crafted gear, you can go to this vendor right here. You're going to be able to turn in that crafted gear for certificates of grandeur. You only want to turn in that gear once you know you're going to have enough or find some super cheap 510 pieces on the market board. Sometimes you can find them for 30k or 20k and turn those in for certificates instead. High quality is going to give you more certificates than normal quality. Another thing you're going to need is tombstones of allegory. These are really easy to get once you're level 80 because pretty much any level 80 activity is going to give you these tombstones. You can also do duty roulettes which will give you a lot of tombstones. I go back from tombstones and tombstones. I know I'm going to hear it from you guys in the comment section, but you'll need a lot of these tombstones in order to turn in for the item level 520 crafted gear. You'll turn the tombstone of allegory in for rain, which is 100 tombstones per piece or per turn in. Once you have enough of these two items, you can then turn in everything, get your item level 520 gear and be set. If you want to go the other route, which is the crypt lurkers gear, then 
you can go and get Tombstones of Revelation. These are a little harder to get because it's considered like super end game and they're going to give you access to not only 520 Crypt Lurkers gear, but also 530 eventually if you get the turn-ins needed for those. You do have a cap of Revelation Tombstones, which is 900. We just recently got a buff of those, which it used to be 450 was the cap and now you can get 900 of them every single week. With that being said, you're not going to be able to get every piece of gear in time if you've started too late. So I would just worry about getting to 520 and not really putting any more energy towards it. Since we all have lives and things come up, you can get Revelation Tombstones the exact same way as Allegory. They usually go hand in hand. You'll notice that you get an influx of Allegory Tombstones instead of Revelations for a lot of the activities. And the cap for Allegory Tombstones is 2000. So you can pretty easily keep getting those. The other great thing about Allegory Tombstones is that you can get as many as you want as long as you spend them. You're not capped at 900 per week or 2000 per week. You can just keep getting them. If you would like to move up to 530 and you have the time, you'll have to do a series of things to unlock Eden's Promise, which is the Alliance Raid for Shadowbringers, as well as Near Automata Raid. These give you drops that you use for turn-ins in order to augment the Crypt Lurkers gear. Which leads us to our part two activity. Definitely do Eden's Promise Raids and Near Automata Raids. They're not going anywhere, but they give a lot of interesting story to Shadowbringers, and for me personally, really round out the expansion. And you're going to have to do these activities if you wanna get that 530 gear. But if you are geared and you already have most things unlocked, then that leads us to the third player. If you're at this point where you've already done a lot of the things I previously mentioned, then I would jump into Boja content. Boja content is level 70 to 80. I believe you have to be level 71 in order to jump in. And it's the Save the Queen's quest. For new players, Boja is just an instant area where 72 players are kind of on a battlefield. This is the same as Eureka, which you can do in Stormblood. The reason you're gonna wanna jump into this content is there's a lot of cool gear and mounts and things you can get, but also because once the new expansion comes out, it's probably going to die just because of everyone's gonna be doing the main story quest and all the new things that have come out in Endwalker. It doesn't mean that it won't ever come back, but it probably won't for a long time. It's similar to Eureka where people are now going back and getting relic weapons that are associated with that content. The same thing will probably happen with Boja eventually once Endwalker starts to plateau a little bit. You can only start Boja once you complete the main story so that might be the next thing you want to jump into. The very last thing that I want to talk about is making sure that you farm your mounts. I just recently jumped into farming mounts with a Discord friend, not Pete. Thank you very much for your support on Patreon. But we had a lot of fun going through and learning the level 60 trials in order to get the mounts. It was a lot of fun to learn from scratch with just me and another person. And it took a long time at first to learn the mechanics, but it ended up being a really good time once we completed it. Once we finished it once, it only took four or five minutes to keep beating it and we were able to get him the mount he needed. Once the new expansion comes out, farming these old content mounts is gonna be a lot harder. Level 50 extreme trials, you can probably do by yourself, but level 60 will tend to be a little harder. Level 70, you'll definitely need someone to do it with. Probably solo it yourself, but it's just better if you do it if you have a friend or go into the main city and ask someone if they want to. Another thing you can do is just use the party finder or create your own party in party finder. You access the party finder by this setting right here, and then you'll be able to search through everything that is currently being looked for or queued for as terms of a party. You can tap right over to trials and take a look down to see if anyone is doing mount farming or you can create your own party you can do other things while you're waiting for the party to be formed but most of the time you only need three or four people unsynced to blow through a lot of that content I would make sure that you have all the unlock quests first, which you can just simply Google for those quests in order to find out how to unlock the extreme versions. If you have an FC, this just makes it a whole lot easier in order to farm those mounts, and they'll probably be putting up events soon in order to get all the mounts you need. If I had to sum it all up, these are the few things that I would focus on before Endwalker comes out. If I was a brand new player, I definitely want to get through most of the story, farm my mounts, do a little bit of Boja, and gear up. 
These are gonna get you prepped for Endwalker where you're gonna be able to enjoy the content as soon as it drops and really feel the hype of the community. There are tons and tons of other things that you can do as well, but I would just focus on these few things in order to get ready for the new expansion. I wanna thank you all for watching this video. I wanna give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate your continued support and you protect me from the YouTube algorithm. If you wanna connect with me on social media or join my public Discord, you can do that in Linktree, which is in the description down below. If you've ever considered supporting the channel, then you can also find all that information in the Linktree. If you wanna watch more Final Fantasy tutorials, then you can click here.